Uh, good evening, everyone. Nice to see you. And uh, yes, nice to see the doctors also. Welcome. Uh, we were looking at the Geda of the Melacha of uh, Koitza, and uh, we mentioned two tzadodim, um, two possible definitions of what the, uh, the Melacha is. Um, the first definition is that this is the Hafsokat Hayanika, the cessation of uh, drawing sustenance, uh, which is intuitively what we would think harvesting means. Harvesting means something is attached to the ground or attached to the tree, and I detach it from its, uh, um, its roots, from its, uh, where it suckles, where it draws sustenance, and that's the malacha. So that's one way of understanding the get of the malacha, and that's one intuition. But we don't notice that uh, mixed up in our intuitions is a second way of understanding the, uh, the malacha, which is... Um, a more mechanical definition of the um, of, of the melacha, which is uh, detaching it, detaching it from the point at which it is attached to the uh, tree or attached to the uh, ground. And uh, I think I showed, uh, we looked last week, last year, at the Rambam, the Rambam in the Shabbos, Perit Ches Halacha Dalad, um, in which the Raman Paskins that uh, if I detach a clod of earth from the ground and out of the clod of earth is growing um, uh, um, grasses, then that's also the uh, Malacha of uh, Koitza, says the Rambam, because uh, even though it's still drawing sustenance from the clod of earth, um, which it attaches itself to, and uh, evidently the reason is because nonetheless of uprooted it from its Mokham Chibur, from where it was attached previously. And uh, if one's not convinced of that, then the continuation of the Ramam, the Ramam says explicitly that if I detach Te'enim Sheyovshu, um, dates which have dried on their twigs, um, or uh, other fruit trees where the fruit has dried, and I detach that from the uh, tree, I'm Chayav because of the Malacha of Koitza. In others, even though these are dried and no longer drawing sustenance from the tree, nonetheless, I'm chayev for so doing. So this is the uh, um, this is the view of the Rambam. The Rambam is really basing himself on a Gemara in uh, Daf Pe'alif, which we looked at last time. The Gemara ostensibly says explicitly, like the Rambam, that you're chayev even for detaching dried uh, fruits off the tree. And we saw the Rashi and Tosfos or Madcha the Gemara, and they say the Gemara doesn't really mean chayev. We're not talking about real Malacha over here. We're only talking about a drabonon, but certainly the rice you will not be high for koitza if you detach a fruit from a tree when the fruit is completely dried and is no longer drawing any unika, any uh, life from the tree. So what we basically have is a rambam who learns that even fully dried fruit, you are chayv if you detach them. In other words, the definition of the malacha is um, koitza means the mechanical process of detaching it from its mokum chibur. And uh, Rashi and Tosfus in the Gemara seem to learn that you are potter in such a case because the Malacha is detaching something from its Mokum Yunika from where it draws uh, sustenance. And each Mahalach, each way of thinking about things, has a, a coherence to it. On the one hand, that's what Koitza is. You stop it growing. On the other hand, um, Koitza is one of the 11 processes in, in the production of bread, and it can be a mechanical thing. And the same as threshing is a mechanical uh, removal of the shell, the clipper of the grain. Similarly, um, uh, removing something, detaching it from the ground, that's the malachas. So that's the machlokas that we saw uh, last time. And this really is a topic that the great uh, Reb Chaim Briska uh, opened up for discussion, and that was the, the lengthier piece of the, 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 in the handout sheet, which we're not going to go through. Um, in, in, in any further great depth. What I do want to do is just mention a few of the very fascinating other sources on this topic, um, because this is a very interesting thing. And uh, the first source that I want to mention is right at the bottom of the second handout sheets that I gave out, uh, Mark's uh, Geta Koitza number two, in which the Shulchan Aruch says that... Um, uh, well, the, the topic of the Shulchan Aruch is at the bottom of the second source sheet. This is Shulchan Aruch in Simon Toft Sadi Zion, and it's talking about Seder, the Malacha of uh, trapping on Yom Tov. On Shabbos, uh, you wouldn't be able to go fishing uh, anyway, because by removing the fish from the water, you are killing the fish, and uh, you can't do so on Shabbos. However, on Yom Tov, if the pool has already been dammed so that the fish are easily... 
um, uh, it's a small pool and the fish can't escape, then you can grab a fish out of the pool, out of the pond on Shabbos, and it's not um, um, it's not a melacha of tzedah. So says the Shulchan Aruch. Uh, we're not going to go into the details of Seder, but if the fish can swim around and evade capture, then it would be Seder. If they're anyway just grabbable uh, pretty quickly, then there's no malach of Seder over here, and therefore you can do so on uh, on Yom Tov. The Mogan Avram, prince in the source sheet, brings from the Mahashal. With Shlomo Luria, he calls him the Rashal, but we refer to him as the Mahashal, with Shlomo Luria, um, who was a, a contemporary of the Ramah, an older contemporary of the Ramah. And he, uh, let's just read this inside, these are the bottom two lines in the source sheet, the Rashal took on another view. Shekosov bedogim ain't a chayv mishum tzedah. With dog, with dog, you're not chayv with for trapping them. Did I have a dumim de mishkan? It's not similar to the trapping that's great in the mishkan. Okay. Ela chayv mishum kaitze. The Rashal says that the reason you're chayv for trapping, for catching fish on, removing fish from the ponds on Shabbos is because of kaitze. Did I have a oika dava migadulei? You are removing something from its place of growth, because it used to be your shalmi, etc. And the Shomachi Chayv are few to be and therefore your Chayv even on Yom Tov. So the Marshal quotes here a your shalmi, and he quotes your shalmi uh, accurately. Um, your shalmi on our sugya, your shalmi on the second Mishnah of the seventh period of Shabbos, um, that says that someone who hunts a fish and removes a fish from the water on Shabbos is um, Chayv Mishum Koitza, because the words of Yashalmi are Mavdilai Mechiyosai. You're removing it from its uh, life source. So um, this Yashalmi seems to be clearly adopting one possibility in the Geda, in the definition of Koitza. If you remove a fish from the pond, there's no uh, mechanical malacha of uprooting something, detaching something. That uh, doesn't apply. There's no detaching that takes place. It's not attached to the water. However, the Yoshalmi views the water as the source of giddle, of growth of the fish, and therefore you are oikadovam ikadolo, you're uprooting something from its uh, mokum giddle, and therefore the Yoshalmi is of the view that one is chayev uh, for doing so because of the malacha of koita. So I think this is a pretty clear source in the Yoshalmi, like one sad in, the, uh, in, the, in this chakira of Reb Chaim, in this investigation of Reb Chaim as to how to define malachas koita. Yes, Philip, you're muted, but uh, unmute yourself, yeah. Um, it seems to contradict himself slightly because he's saying any dumya the mishkan, but isn't um, taking a fish out of water also not ena dumya the mishkan? The the marshal says it's not dumya to mishkan to the way seder takes place. Yeah. However, he thinks it is similar enough to koitza. You're right. I mean, it's a remarkable idea, yeah. but uh, that's what the marshal says. He says that it's too dissimilar to the way Seder was done in the Mishkan to be considered Seder. But for all intents and purposes, it's similar enough to um, to uh, Koitza to be considered the Malach of Koitza. Okay. It's, it's, very, it's very quite simple. different for not to do the path in any way. So how it's like, why it's done either. No, okay, well, well, that's always the case, that um, the Malachas are defined... By the, uh, it, it often isn't to draw the parts. I mean, uh, you know, it's not even good to do like Karka. Sorry, it's not even good to do like Karka. Anyway. Th- that is correct, and that's the Chiddush. That's the yeah. insight of the Yerushalmi that says that nonetheless, um, this is removing something from its uh, place of growth, and that's enough to make it uh, the malacha of, of harvesting of koitza. That the, the Yerushalmi is very clear. It means that the malacha of koitza on Shabbos. Is not detaching something because there's no detachment taking place over here. The Menachah is removing something from its place of growth, and therefore that's enough to make you chive. Mm. Okay. So, so does that much. mean, Rabbi, would you take that further? You could say that if you hunt a deer on Yom Tov as well, it would also, if the deer is living off the grass, or any cat, any, you do any sort of form of, of, of hunting, you're both high of two things, Seder and Kotze on that basis. No, no, he wouldn't say that, because when you hunt the deer, you're not removing it from its mock and giddle. Whereas with a fish, the definition of removing a fish from the ponds is removing it from its place of growth. No, but if it's living off the grass, or any animal which lives off the grass and eats off the grass... You're, you're, you're correct in what you're asking. Your Yerushalmi is, is difficult conceptually, but the Yerushalmi seems to understand that the, the water is its own zone, its own space, and therefore removing the fish from the water is removing it from its own environment. When it, a, a deer on grass is not removed from the environment by trapping it. It's within its world, 
you're just uh, killing it or you're just uh, um, you know hunting it but you're not uh, removing it from its 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 environment whereas the pool is the uh, is the environment from within which it lives um I, I, just to comment, it wasn't actually my question, but to comment on Adams, maybe there's a closer parallel for Adam is, is actually putting a plastic bag and suffocating a deer where you're removing the, it from it, its air so it can't breathe anymore. I'm uh, just wondering if, the, if that is, but that wasn't actually my point. My, my point is, that according to the Marshall, why does it need to be tofa slow shooter? Uh, sorry, why does it need to be um, the socha amasamai? Surely any hunting fish is cutting it off from the source. No, correct. The, the mashal is cholik on the Ramah. The, the mashal says that the Shulchan Aruch and the Ramah understand that the issue with fishing is, is seda. And the mashal argues, he says, the issue with fishing is not seda, it's not trapping. The issue with fishing is, um, is uh, kaita. So, so, the, so the, the case brought by the Shulchan so the mashal is really arguing the Shulchan Aruch? Yes, that's well. correct. Yes, yeah. Right, okay. Yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. But is it possible that the difference is between fishing with a net, which is tired, and fishing with a line, which is, which is not like trapping? Um, you, you're saying in Seda, the distinction. Yeah. There, mm -hmm. there could be, I mean, there's, there, in Seda, there's all sorts of forests. Um, my focus here is on Kaita, not, not on Seda. Um, but I it mean, just seems, it would turn I mean, out according to the Sorry? Fishing with a net seems to be as close to saving yeah. thing you can think of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I don't know how to answer that. That's true. Um, the, 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 according to the Marshal, I mean, there would be enough Gemina here. According to the Ramah and the Shulchan Aruch, if you trap a fish in a net and it's still in the water, you'd be chayev because of Tzayda. According to the Marshal, that there's no Tzayda over here, you would not be chayev for Kaita because you're still leaving the fish in the water. And therefore, you haven't removed the fish from its environment, and therefore, no coat has taken place. It, it's, it's, again, I want to stress: it's not really the marshal; it's the Yerushalmi. The reason I, quit, I brought the marshal is because um, it, it, I just, it's just interesting that it's entered into the realm of uh, Sak Kalacha. Uh, it's, it's definitely not; it's definitely not an intuitive idea. But this is what the Yerushalmi says: it's an it's an extreme example of how far you can take Oiket of Megdolo. But what's clear is that the Yerushalmi is in the camp of Oikadava Migadulo. There's no uh, detaching that's taking place, but rather removing something from its uh, source of uh, growth. So, so it would appear clear in the view of the Yerushalmi. Um, what's fascinating over here is that on the same sugya of the Yerushalmi, um, here on our Mishnah, in, in the second Mishnah in, in, uh, in Kal Gadol, um, the Yerushalmi says that um, Choylev, milking, and which means removing honeycombs, according to one opinion in the Yishalmi, is of Mishum Kaitza, is also Chayv because of Kaitza. Now, again, just to repeat that, in, in later, not, not today, but in the next year, hopefully, we will look at the issue of Choylev, because it comes up in our Sugya twice, both here in terms of Kaitza, and Taisa brings it up in the, in the context of um, uh, Mufarik. What is the problem with milking a, a cow on Shabbos? However, the Yerushalmi answers the question by, says, by saying, you know what the problem is? It's mafar, it's, it's kota, it's harvesting. In the same way as if I pick a fruit off a tree or uproot uh, wheat from the ground, that's the malacha of uh, kota, of harvesting. The Yerushalmi says also, if I'm choylev, if I remove milk from the cow, that's also uh, the malacha of harvesting. And the Yerushalmi even says, if I uh, detach a honeycomb from uh, a honey... Uh, um, a, a bee's uh, nest that's also the Malacha of Kaitza. Now, interestingly, this Yerushalmi makes its way into a Rashi on the Bavli. And again, I don't want to go too much into the, the Sugya now, but when we look at the concept of Cholev, we will be sent by the Yerushalmi to Daftadi Hei Omadalev, and there it discusses uh, um, Cholev and Mafarik, and Rashi there brings, he says, Ista Amri. He says, there are those that say that Cholev is a told of Kaitza. That milking is a told of kaitza, and he says velohi. It's not correct. The love mechubahu. It's not attached. Ella pocket. It's stored. Um, the okiv akai, and it's already okiv akai. It's already detached because it's just stored in the um, in the uh, in the udders of the cow. So Rashi brings a yeshomim and ista amri. There are those that say that um, storing, that milking is kaitza, and Rashi says it's not true. You're not detaching anything, 
you're simply um, removing it from a, a storage container, and therefore it's chodik. But who is this Ista Amri? Rashi doesn't tell us who it is. Uh, I don't know if Rashi had the same Yerushalmi as we have or not, or, uh, in this case. But either way, in our Yerushalmi, this is the view of the Yerushalmi that milking a uh, a cow is meleches koitza. Now, as is removing a honeycomb. Now this, um, therefore, gets us into somewhat of a mess. Because here, if we live in Reb Chaim's world, um, which side in the Hakira, in the investigation of Reb Chaim, is this? Koitza we saw already. Is Koitza detaching? Or is Koitza um, drawing sustenance? So the Yerushalmi that spoke about the fish out of the ponds seems to be one of drawing sustenance. Uh, the very words of the Yerushalmi is Mavdino Michiyosu, you're removing it from its uh, um, life source. However, with the honey in the honeycomb and the milk in the cow, you're not seemingly withdrawing it from its life source. What are you doing? You're detaching it. And that's Rashi's very crit- critique of this view. He says, you're not detaching it, it's simply stored in a bag. Okay, but the Yerushalmi holds, no, you're detaching it from the, um, it's not just stored in the, in the cow, it's, it's attached to the cow and you're detaching it from the cow. So here the Yerushalmi seems to be taking the opposite stance, that the Melacha is, Meleches Koitza is detaching, as opposed to Oke Gedaza Me Gedore. So what this seems to be leading us to is a, uh, um, is a realization that perhaps these two ways of looking at things uh, make us miss a, a third possible way of defining the uh, Melacha somewhere in between, which is that the Melacha is um, removing something from its, the place where it was formed and grew. And this would seem to satisfy uh, the criteria. The fish is removed from the place it grew and was formed. The honey and the milk are withdrawn from the place in which it grew and formed. In which case, the Rambam, who argues with all these sources, and the Rambam who holds that you're high of, um, for even dried fruits, would perhaps hold that the malacha is de- the mechanical detachment. However, um, the Yerushalmi could adopt a softer stance in which it says it's removal of something from the place in which it grew. It's neither removing the yunika, the drawing of sustenance, because that's not taking place over here, nor is it just the mechanical de- uh, uh, detaching something from its, its stalk, which doesn't take place in the case of the fish. It's removing something from its place of growth, and that would be the malacha of Kotza. So just to summarize, um, we started off life very simply. One of the 39 malachas is kaitza, it's harvesting. But when we unpick what we mean by harvesting, the definition of kaitza is not so clear cut. Does it mean removing something from drawing sustenance? In which case, a dried fruit, a fruit that's dried in the tree, you would be exempt from, Rashi and Tosis's view. Even though the Gemara says chayev, they say it means only drabonon, not min ha-Torah. You're not, as far as Torah law is concerned, you're not chayev for detaching a dried fruit off a tree. Um, that's position Option number one. Option number two is the malacha is the mechanical removing of something from its uh, that it's attached to. That possibly is the view of the Rambam. And then the Yerushalmi seems to adopt a third path. Any case where I remove something from its place of growth, that's already enough to be mechay of me in the uh, malacha, to mean that I've, I've uh, done the malacha of koitza, of harvesting, and therefore even fishing and removing uh, milk from a, a cow and uh, removing honeycomb from a, a, a bee's nest, etc., a hive of bee, all these things are enough to say that you are transgressing the prohibition of the malacha of koitza, of harvesting. So that's, uh, I, I think, a, uh, um, some clarity as to what the malacha of um, koitza is. And um, as I mentioned last week, I'm not going to go through it all the day again, this is not just a Shabbos topic. The issue of what's called attached and detached from the grounds and how that works is found in all sorts of other sujahs. It's found in, um, in the halacha of Shavua, of making promises, uh, in which there's a difference between whether you make a promise on a Shavua on something which is um, a Shavua in, in court, that means an oath, not a promise, an oath. Whether it's an oath on something which is um, uh, detached from the grounds or part of the grounds, um, it has effect on sales, whether the fruit are included in the sale or not, um, and uh, all sorts of uh, other halachas. But here, at least with respect to Shabbos, that seems to be how we're defining uh, the malacha of Koitza. So can I just ask a question? Or, or, or the way the Yerushalmi defines it, does that mean he would hold, presumably in the case of the dead date, which is on the tree, when you remove that, that would still be high according to the Yerushalmi. And presumably also, 
in, in the case, the other case of when you remove the pot, you remove it onto the peg or whatever, presumably that wouldn't be hive then. It, sorry, in, in, I'm, not, I'm not understanding. Which case would it not be hive? It wouldn't be hive in the case where you, you took your grass stuff and, and you I'm just sorry, the, detached the, it. The, the line is internet reception is going unclear, which is all I'm using. You. I mean, the, ca the case when you move the the grass and moved it onto a your, your tay dot. Oh, sorry, yes. You wouldn't be hive in that case. You, you would be. Um, according to Yashalmi, yeah. that's an interesting point. According to Yashalmi, if you remove a pot, if you remove the clods of earth, um, is that called Oikadovome Gedulai? Quite possibly not. And that's, a, that's an interesting point. Maybe not. I don't know. I, I, I don't want to answer that on the spot because I, I haven't thought about it. But I, I think that's a fair point. Okay, that's a, that's a fair point. Okay, so this is the... Um, these are the views of the... Um, uh, yeah, I'll make a note of that question, Adam. It deserves, it deserves thought and I just don't want to answer on the spot. But it's a good, it's a good question. Okay, so this is the definition of... Uh, of Kaita based upon the sources we've seen. Um, I want to move on to the next lines of the Gemara and at least try and dip our toes into a, um, the next term used by the Gemara. Omar Papa, hi man de shoddy piece of ridicula. Someone threw a uh, clod of earth at a palm tree. The Asa Tamri and uh, knocked off some dates growing on the palm tree. Chayv Stein, one's Chayv for two Malachas. Achas Mishum Toilesh, the Achas Mishum Mafarik. One for the Malacha of Toilesh and one for the Malacha of uh, Mafarik. Mafarik means uh, dismantling. And we'll see what Malacha that is. So the Yerushalmi tells us, the, the Rapapa tells us, that if you throw a clod of earth at a, um, a tree and you knock off the date, you're hive because of, of Toilesh, fine, not too controversial. And you're also hive for Mafarik, which is some other Malacha. And we'll see, uh, we'll see probably at the beginning of next year, what other malacha is mafarik, Rashi, Toysus, etc., and that we'll, we'll have a look at. However, um, in the meantime, what is this malacha of Toilesh? What sort of malacha is this? So Rashi says that Toilesh is a tolder of koitza. Toilesh is a subcategory of koitza of harvesting. Plucking the fruit of the tree or knocking the fruit of the tree is a tolder of Koitza. Um, I just put on the WhatsApp group moments before the share um, a few other sources because I should have uh, um, I should have uh, given them to you. Um, Gary, can you enable me to share screen because I'd like to uh, I'd like to be able to share the sources um, for those of you that I, I, as I said I just put it on the uh, the WhatsApp group late in the day. I didn't realise that I would. Uh... Are you able to do that? If not, don't worry. Ah, excellent. Thank you. You should be able to share now. Yeah. Perfect. Um, can everyone see this this um, this source sheet now? Yes, it's visible, Rabbi Zabin. Okay, excellent. So Rashi says that Tolesh is a tolder of Koitza. I have emailed this, I have WhatsApp this to you, but um, as I say, I only did it moments before the share. What, can you see on the on the screen just the the, the sheet? The, is that can, is that what you can see? Mm -hmm. Yes, that's fine. Yeah, excellent. Okay, and can you see my cursor? Yep. Yeah, okay. So the Rambam in Perik Ches Halacha Gimel um, speaks about the definition of koitza, and he says, koitza gregeres chayev. If you harvest a gregeres, a shear, a measure, you're chayev. The toilesh told us koitza who. And toilesh is a tolder of koitza. The chol oike dova megadolo chayev mishum koitza. In any case of um, oike dova megadolo, you're chayev because of koitza. And then he, uh, he speaks about what we spoke about, um, various scenarios of Koitza. Now, the Rambam says explicitly that Toilesh, like Rashi, that Toilesh is a tolder of Koitza. Where is the Rambam coming from? Well, by now, hopefully, we know the answer to the question. Um, the Rambam is used to the style of the language of the Gemara, because the Gemara um, tells us, HaKoitza, Tana, Abraisa, HaKoitza, HaBoitza, HaGoida, HaMasik, Vaura, Kulon, Melacha, Achasein. They're all one Melacha. 
And the Rambam, we've seen again and again, learns that that state which means they are all co malachas They're all similar enough that they all count as one malacha. Why? Because they all have the end goal in, in sight of uh, um, harvesting something. However, this Brysa does not list Toilesh, indicating that Toilesh is a told or not an av. And again, by now, hopefully, this is a pattern that we're very familiar with. This parallels the, the language of the Gemara earlier. Um, the Gemara earlier said, uh, And uh, the Rambam explained it that way. Then, This is a very standard formulation of the Gemara when it brings these prices, in which the Gemara means they're all of us. Toilesh significantly is missing from the list. And therefore, the Rambam learns that Toilesh is a tolda. Now, very, diff- with, with, very problematically, the Rambam in Perish Mishnayas seems to say the opposite. The Rambam in his commentary on the Mishnayas um, says the opposite. And here I'm pointing with a cursor to the Perish Mishnayas. Um, this is cut and paste from the Perish Mishnayas at the back of my Gemara. The Eilu HaOvers Kulon Dimionis. These 39 Overs listed in the Mishnah, they're all Dimionis, they're all examples. The who, and now he, he explains what he means. Ki omon koitza, when the Mishnah lists koitza, huma ovus malachas, that's one of the ovus malachas. O kumon kain, kol ha toileish semach mechubal aret, any toileish of semach, any uprooting of a, uh, a vegetable, a growing thing that's attached to the ground, kashakavon also be usadava, when his intention is, she toileish, that he's toileish, kami she oret te enim, a boitza novim, a chovet zesim. Now he gives the examples of oret and boitza and chovet. All of them, we don't say they are told us of Kota. This is literally Kota. And so on and so forth. So the Ramam Mpesh Mishnai says, Beferish, any Toilesh is the Av. And then the examples of Toilesh are um, Oira and Boitzer and Chovet. Um, so this is in direct stira in the Rambam. Now, I can't tell you how much ink has been spilt over this problem in the Rambam, this contradiction in the Rambam. Other than to tell you, we live in very blessed times, because the Rambam wrote in uh, Arabic, and all the Perish Mishnahis that we have of the Rambam is a translation of the Rambam into uh, into Lashon Hakodesh, into Hebrew. Translation was done by members of the Ibn Tabun family who lived in um, Provence, in the south of France, and were uh, Arabic-speaking refugees from Spain who entered into the non-Arabic uh, regions of France. And people in France were, were fascinated. They wanted to know what the Rambam had written. And they translated the Perish Mishnayas into Lashon HaKodesh. And the Rambam was very happy with their translation. It was an excellent translation. However, as far as we can tell, he didn't proofread every word of it. And we lost some of the precision in the language of the Rambam through uh, the translation. I've printed here below the cut and paste from my uh, Rambam, um, the more recent language of the Rambam Perish Mishnayas from Kapach. Kapach is a, uh, a Yemenite uh, Rav who lived in Eretz Israel and died a few years ago. Kap- I believe his name is commonly pronounced Kapach by Asashkenazim, but I believe it's something like Kap- Kapiach or something like that. And uh, here he gives a different translation. Anyone who cuts a plant growing from the ground, if he intends to cut it, so he doesn't say Toilish, he says Chotech. Now, I'm no expert on uh, Arabic, and uh, I, I can't determine which is the more accurate translation, but what we see from this is that the Rambam used a word in Arabic, uh, which isn't exactly analogous to Toilish, and uh, the confusion perhaps arose because we, we assume that this means exactly uh, a Toilish, whereas in fact um, it doesn't mean exactly Toilish, it means something else which is uh, akin to Toilish, but uh, can also be translated as Chotech. So uh, I'll simply point out that this stew in the Rambam may well be a uh, an error in uh, derive from an error in uh, an error in translation. Nonetheless, um, as I say, there is much discussion about why would the Rambam count Toilesh as a tolda? What doesn't satisfy the criteria of uh, Toilesh to allow it to be only a tolda, not an av? After all, it is a form of harvesting, um, and that question remains a little a little unresolved. Um, interestingly, and with this I'll conclude, the Yerushalmi brings this Brysa, the same Brysa as the Bavli, um, of uh, um, all the different forms of, um, uh, of, of all the different forms of harvesting. And the Yerushalmi uh, says it like us, HaKotza, Botza, Goza, etc. And then it adds in the word Vatolesh. So the Yerushalmi actually lists Toilesh in the list of Ovas Malachas, um, HaKotza, Botza, Mostak, HaKotza, Vatolesh, 
um, Kulon Mishum Koitza, all of them are included in the Malach of Koitza. Zishalmi Befeirish says that a Toilish is an Av, seemingly, if we understand the price that way. But the Rambam, based upon the language of the Gemara and Rashi, take on the view that Toilish is a Tolda, and we've answered the Stira in the contradiction between the Rambam and the, uh, the Perish Mishnayis. So this is uh, the view of the Rambam. Uh, next year, on Sunday, we're going to look at the topic of Mafarik and what that means. Um, there's two things we really need to look at in Mafarik. First of all, uh, what Mafarik means in the context of dates, the very topic of Rapapa, and secondly, um, then how to uh, apply it in other, in other instances. Uh, that's the concept of Mafarik, and we'll also have a look at uh, Tosis when we get up to that. Um, in the meantime, I wish everyone, uh, if, unless anyone has any questions on what we said, uh, I wish everyone a good evening. Just ask quickly, the, the, this idea of, of Tolesh, is it possible that the Tolesh is only talking about this, uh, this specific case where he wasn't directly Tolesh, but he threw something against the tree? Or is it obvious that that would be the same thing as picking it directly? The Rambam just says it as a general rule. The Rambam just says Tolesh is a Tolda. That's all the Rambam says. Um, the Mishnah, the, the Brysa, doesn't list Tolesh as one of the, the, obvious, one of the types of harvesting. So it would imply that Tolish is Tolish, it's a Tolda. There, there is a brisk Rav who says, like you, he says Tolish is only in a situation which is unusual, but not when it's usual. Something that's normally harvested by, by uh, equipment, if you harvest by hand, is a Tolda. If you use the appropriate equipment, if it's normal to harvest it by hand, then that would be okay. Um, it, it's a little difficult in the, in the easiest reading, in the simplest reading of the Rambam. Okay, um, uh, uh, Edward, did you want to ask something? Sorry, Edward? No, no he's okay. Right, just, okay. I was just going to mention from an admin perspective, it's very nice that one or two new people joined us. If anyone wants me to set them up with a Chavuta or they want to join an existing one, please uh, text me or, or